you talk a lot about revolutions. I mean, we're all familiar with the Arab Spring. Um, and your sense is that, partly for technological reasons, it is going to be easier and easier to start revolutions, right? But then what happens next? Well, we say that it's easier to start, but harder to finish. Right. So Jerry has looked at this, and he makes the point now over and over again that it takes decades for people to develop the skills, the human skills, the leadership skills, to, uh, to actually run a country, right? These are complicated you know, human systems. And so the techno-optimist would say, oh, you know, let's empower everyone, leaders emerge, and everyone will, you know, will all, it's kumbaya moment. In practice, what happens is sort of the inverse. You end up with the, the apparent nature of a revolution, along with a lot of increases of expectation. You have transitional le leaders who are facing an almost impossible job. They don't have systems of government, and they have very high expectations of their citizens, while we're trying to find the, the leaders that have spent the time to learn how to lead, how to inspire, you know, all the things that we expect out of a modern leader. And we, we talk a lot in the book about uh, you know, how these revolutions will play out outside of the Middle East and North Africa. And we, we made it, this was all happening so fast while we were writing this book that we made the decision uh, on, on the, in the chapter on future of revolutions to start with a statement, we know the story of the Arab Spring. The, you know, let's look at what happens next and in other parts of, of, of the world. And to add to Eric's point about the, 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 the challenges of how technology, for all that's extraordinary about it, can't invent leaders that aren't there and can't create institutions that have never been uh, developed. Um, if you think about the 57% of the world's population that lives under an autocracy, uh, what, that what those populations will have an ability to do in the future is to provoke in ways that we've never seen before. And the way to think about this is let's take a country like Iran. Iran is 72 million people, clearly a dictatorship. Uh, in the physical world in the future, there'll still be roughly 72 million people, but there might be 500 million voices online because every one of them will have multiple emails, multiple social networking profiles, multiple uh, you know, video chat uh, services, et cetera. And this creates a lot of noise and a lot of activity. So why does this create a dilemma for dictators in the future, which by the way is a good thing? Um, it creates a dilemma because dictators in the future are going to have a hard time distinguishing between what's noise and what's real. And they're going to overreact, they're going to underreact, yeah. and where they do so, it's going to get people into the streets. 